Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Your Onion Podcast. We are doing our special for the month of November, which is basically um, putting the light on uh, real estate. And we have our regular guest, um, Jeffrey. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so the topic today is why should you use an agent to help you find your next rental property? So why? <laughs> All right. That's, I think it's a very good question. Uh, so, I mean, there's a question I actually get asked a lot when, when people ask, what do I do? And then they say, well, do I really need to use an agent or can I go myself? And without a doubt, everyone, if they want to go looking on their own, they can do so. Um, Obviously, running a real estate company, we have a bias that we'd like people to use ourselves or use one of our uh, other competitors in the market. I think the, the real main advantage, particularly in today's market, is there's a, there are a lot of options to choose from. And I think uh, when people are looking and they, and they start to do some research, um, they literally get overwhelmed with the, the vast array of properties they can choose from, um, regardless of their budget. Um, there's so many options across the city. Um, whether it's a, a villa, a, a standalone villa, villa on a compound, an apartment, a shared accommodation, whatever it is. So I think you know, the real major advantage to using an agent is it allows you to access all of the market through one person as opposed to yourself having to drive around town and looking and looking and looking and just checking and knocking on doors. By using someone, hopefully it'll cut out a lot of that time and really help you focus on exactly what it is you're looking for. And also by having an agent, you get a sounding board for your questions. So you can ask lots of questions. Um, you can you know, think of, uh, be made aware of areas that you never considered before. And by using someone, it'll hopefully save you a lot of time and get you to find that place you want to live in much, much quicker than trying to do it all on your own. Yeah, do you think, um, you know, being here for 13 years, do you think um, the need for an agent has increased because Doha has expanded and there are a lot more compound uh, apartments available? Yeah, I think that's that's a good point. I think, you know, as I said before, right now in the market, there is a lot of availability, so there are a lot of choices. But even if the market was tight, there would still be choices spread across a large city. Uh, when you and I first met many years ago, you know, the market was a lot smaller. There are a lot more opportunities now. So I, I do think it has a greater advantage um, just by, um, you know, by dealing with somebody. Let me just say it a, a slightly different way. You know, when, we're, when someone is looking at Doha, they'll often say, I want to be in this area or I want to be in this area. The great thing is the city itself is not overly large. Mm. So you could look at, say, as a villa, for example, you could look at you know, near Ikea and, and around that area, you could look at West Bay Lagoon and Daphna, or you could be looking in Awab or the um, Selwa Road area. All are relatively easily commutable. But normally when you look at a map, you think, okay, that, that's way over here and that's way over here. But yeah. when you look at it, think, okay, well, actually, that's only 10 more minutes to go here. And by using an agent, you get a much better idea of that than just trying to figure it all, figuring it all out on your own. Yeah, very true. Um, Okay, if I went to you guys, though, or if I went to any agent, um, it would just be your property that's listed, or are your agents quite flexible in always keeping an eye eye on the overall market? So if it's not listed within Nelson Park, will they you know, contact other agents or right. agencies? Great question. I, it, um, so for Nelson Park itself, uh, and again, this, this does vary across different agencies, for us, we have a really broad range of properties. So I think we're one of the few uh, agents, if perhaps even the only one, that truly covers the entire city of Doha, from again Lucille through the Pearl all the way out towards the you know towards the new airport. Um, a lot of agencies will focus on specific areas, and, and some of the agencies um, basically represent only their own properties that they own. We don't own any properties. So we access compounds that are owned by different people, that are owned by some of the major developers. So we, I feel that as a company ourselves, we can deal literally with, with any property across the market. And if it's something we don't deal with today, then we're happy to go knock on the door and see if we can deal with them in the future. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. If I saw a compound and they, they had a number on the outside of the compound, could I come to you guys as the experts and say, look, I'm not comfortable going in and uh, you know negotiate negotiating because there are some people sure. that aren't that way yeah. inclined so would you uh, would that be a service that yeah you we, we, we'd be more than happy to do that and in fact I'm 
constantly encouraging my own team to be going out and doing that anyway when they see a compound that maybe we don't know that we're reaching out to see if we can work with them. But of course, if any customer said, I've seen this compound, can you go investigate for me? We'd be more than happy to do that. And not in every single case, but in the vast majority of cases, the owners will say, sure, they're happy to work with us if we can bring them a, uh, a tenant. Okay. Yeah. Now, some people are a bit uh, weary uh, about using an agent because the fees involved. Yep. So what kind of fees should uh, someone be expecting when they're using an agent? Right. So the fees that we charge, and I'm going to speak mainly about residential, mm -hmm. so mainly you know, a family or an individual looking for a place to rent. So our fees are half of one month's rent, so if the property you decide to rent is, say, 8,000 reals per month, then our fee is 4,000. Okay. And that's pretty standard across the industry. Yeah. Um, so even, yeah, I think most of our competitors are, are fairly similar in that, in that regard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and choosing an agent, what, what am I looking for? Um, you know, what should their credentials be? Are there credentials for an agent? Um, so in Qatar, there are, there are, the legal requirement is that the agent must be working for a licensed broker, of obviously which we are, uh, and there are many licensed brokers in the country, um, but there is not a, um, a specific licensing situation at the moment for individual brokers, for individual agents, I'm sorry. So, so anyone can be an agent? So if they're working legally for a registered broker. Okay, if they're so, not? Uh, then they shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but are there people in the market that do it? There are, but yes. they should be. So, you know, one of the things, um, you know, I... So that's the first thing that you should check is... Yeah, I, I, and in fact, we get the question a lot and um, from, from customers that say, you know, are you a legal company? Can you send me a copy of your computer card? Can you show me your registered office? Oh, really? As you know, we have two, two offices now, both are registered. Um, and on many occasions, we've had people come in, literally walk in, see the office and go, okay, thank you. I oh, just really? wanted to oh, see okay. that you were yeah, a, yeah. a bona fide company. Uh, so I would, I would definitely do that because it, it gives you a lot more protection if there are any difficulties in the future. Um, I think, I mean, there, there, there are so many criteria that you could use when looking at an agent. I think one of the best ones is, do you have a, do you have a good fit with the person you're speaking to? You know, we have a large team of 22 agents, and I, I always say, you know, not every one of our agents is perfect for every one of our clients. No, sure. Sometimes they're... There might be a cultural affinity, there might be a language affinity, or just you just get along better with people. And, and there have been cases where one, one of my colleagues was working with a client and we shifted them to another colleague just because the fit was better. Mm. And um, I would also recommend, you know, a good place to start is talk to your own colleagues and say, who have you used, who do you recommend? And, you know, chat with friends and family, like, like you would with, you know, if you're back home using a builder or somebody else, you would check with a few friends. By all means, do that. And um, at any time, give us a call, and we'd be happy to introduce you to somebody to um, to help you out. And do you, uh, as the owner, do you monitor how they are interacting with their clients? You know, what what are you looking for, especially if they have an inquiry and you know they're working with a potential client? Do and then they lose them. Yeah. Do you question that? Do you follow up? Yeah. Or do you just say what what's your sales figures for this month um, and don't really. Uh, not so, concern yourself with the client. Good, again, great question. Excuse me. <clears throat> I think for the, what we normally do is as soon as we get a lead that comes in, within three days of the lead coming in, we send a message out to the client to say, um, and it's, it's not sent by the agent, it's sent centrally. And so the agent's not involved. It goes directly to the customer saying, um, you've reached out to us. We're just checking, are you happy with our service? Is there anything that we can do? Have you been followed up with? Uh, and just to, to do a really quick early health check to make sure that's the case. Um, certainly once a deal has been closed as well, uh, when we do the, uh, through our own CRM system, we do a closing and an email goes up to the client saying, you know, how was the service? How was it being done? Um, we're, starting, we, we're starting to do this more on a periodic basis, just reach out to random customers, almost not in a mystery shopper kind of way, but again, not from the agent where we do it centrally okay. to say, you've yeah. been working with our agent, how was the service that, that, that you experienced? Yeah. And um, you learn a lot. You know, I'm sure you do. Yeah, there's a, a, lot of, a lot of good feedback. And, um, you know, this, I always find it's, it's often in people that, say, have, may have been dissatisfied, the fact that you reached out to them. You can learn a lot about your own business. And the vast majority of people really appreciate that. That is, okay, you've, you've actually been willing to listen. And uh, you can, sometimes you can address the problems. Other times it may be too late, but 
you can still fix internal things within your own company to, to make it happen. But again, most people that I work with are very, very happy that you're at least you're reaching out and asking, how was the experience? What can we do better in the future? Yeah. Yeah. So you sit down with your team afterwards after you've got that feedback? Yeah. And well, you put it across? Yeah. What I do, uh, in fact, this came up in yesterday's meeting. Whenever we have uh, really positive feedback, I share it with the entire team. Uh, and if it's less positive, <laughs> I'll share it individually with the agent or with their manager. We'll sit down and do it on a one-to-one. -one. So when they have a request, could you please come and have a meeting with Jeffrey? They it, know. Yeah, that it's not it that. Not, it's normally just a, a quick word. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not near as formal as that. Yeah. Uh, and then a lot of times, I then will share that feedback with the team on an anonymous basis because it's good for the. Okay. Yeah. You know, like. Uh, you know, a phrase I heard many years ago that almost all issues and all conflicts in business are all about missed expectations. And so it's always important to set the expectation right correctly with the customer. Um, and then our goal is to set it correctly and then look to exceed it. And if that doesn't happen, what can we do to make sure that gets fixed in the future? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, what, and what am I expecting the agent to do? You know, when I phone and then you assign me an agent to sort me out, how many yeah. times can I... You know, do I use them until I find a property or is there a limit to uh, how many properties uh, I can be shown? No, absolutely. You, we'll continue to work with you and work with you until you find the place that you're, you're satisfied really? with. What, what I encourage our agents to do, and, you know, I think different people have different views on this. I find for a particular, let's say, tour of properties that we, we may do on a given day, Often, once you get past four or five properties, it starts to get really confusing. Mm. You know, what have I seen so far? What are the different things? I remember the third one you saw. So what I like to do is sort of, you know, maybe the, the initial contact may be by telephone or face-to-face -face where you talk about the customer's needs. What are they looking for? What are the kind of the key things they need? Uh, and then on, when you start doing that tour, um, you know, a good agent will always be checking in with you as you go along. Okay. Uh, if, if I can be so bold to give suggestions to, to customers, <clears throat> the more information they can share, the better it is. The more, it's, it's a bit like going to your doctor and saying, doctor, I've got a lot of pain. And the doctor saying, okay, well, where does it hurt? Yeah. Well, I don't really want to tell you because you know, I just don't want to tell you. So, but can you please take care yeah. of this? So the more you can share, the more feedback you can give after looking at a property, the better the agent can help you. Um, and that's where... You know, again, our job as agents is to draw that information out, so make sure that we're asking the right questions to find out what those things are, because then we can really help. And so I would say that, you know, again, on initial visit, maybe three to four different properties, depending on what you're looking for. And then again, if we need to go multiple times, then we'll keep doing so yeah. until we find the place that you're happy with. And I'm just curious, when people come to the Middle East and to Qatar, do they have certain expectations? Is there ever been where you can't fulfill those, ex you know, those uh, requests or? Oh, absolutely. I think the, you know, where people come from, uh, they're sort of their, their home base. This mm -hmm. is me as a Canadian. So I've just, you know, I have my kind of Canadian expectations of where I like to live and where I've done, uh, or where I've lived previously. And then, you know, a lot of expats, this is not necessarily their first posting, uh, the first time overseas. So they may have come from, say, from they come from Kuwait. And their experience in Kuwait is what has set their standard. So depending on their experience there will really affect okay. what it is that they get here. Uh, as you know, my wife and I, we used to live in Moscow, a very different experience to Qatar, but we've lived in Oman previously. We lived in Beirut. So we have some Middle Eastern experience, which far from identical to Qatar, but there are similarities. So, you know, we all bring our, our own experiences. Mm. I think the, um, you know, one of the, words, I, when people ask, what is your budget? I think I may have said this on a previous show, is I find that everyone's budget is 10% less than what they want. And, and I've always found that personally, is that even as you're, maybe you're moving up in an organization, and you're getting more salary, you're getting a higher budget, it's, it never necessarily seems to be enough for what it is that you want. So yeah. I think that one of the key things for, for anyone that's looking to rent, uh, to rent property, there, in almost every case, there's an element of compromise. Uh, where, okay, these five or six things are really what I want, but one or two doesn't quite fit, but overall I'm happy. Mm. And I think compromise is often a good thing when, uh, when looking for the right property. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't, uh, it, it can be any factor, but it, uh, it depends on the individual customer. Yeah. yeah. Final question. 
Okay, I've moved to the new property. Yep. And I have an issue with the landlord. The landlord isn't uh, f- fulfilling, you know, what was uh, stipulated in the contract. Mm-hmm. Can I come to you guys uh, rather than going direct to the landlord? Or if I, even if I've gone to the landlord and he's refusing um, to answer my questions, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Yeah, it's one of the key things in our company that we, we often talk about is, is kind of where is that point? Mm. And uh, what, what I've always stressed within our company, and I like to believe that we continue to do this, is, you know, our, our view is that, you know, the, our service doesn't stop the day that you sign the check or to put a sharper point on it. Our service doesn't stop the day you pay us a commission. Yeah. So we should always stay with the customer. However, you know, if a customer... Uh, if a, you know, a client is now living in the compound, the contract that they have is with that landlord. Mm. And so we'll make sure that they know the right people in the, that compound to, to solve the issues. Because as much as we're happy to, you know, if you want to call us, that, that's fine. But actually calling the compound manager, you actually make it a much quicker solution yeah. than, than yeah. going through the agent. Um, and so we've been involved from time to time with maybe there's a dispute between the two, then we'll try to mediate okay. as, as best we can that's good too. Uh, to try to help out. Um, and I think but a lot of it is just making sure that the right connections are made with the people in the villa or on the compound so that if there are issues, they can get it dealt with quickly with the right people. And there, to be very transparent about it, there have been compounds that we've stopped dealing with because mm-hmm. we've been dissatisfied with how the compound itself has dealt with our clients. Oh, okay. So we've said, well, we will not bring clients to this anymore because we're not, we don't believe that the quality of service our tenants are going to get is of a high enough standard and they'll just be disappointed. Mm. So they'll take it because it looks nice and they'll move in. But we know that the after, you know, kind of after move in experience is poor. So we'll stop taking clients to that. And we've done that many times. We'll yeah. just stop dealing with, with different compounds because of that. No, that's good. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jeffrey. My pleasure. Thank you for the tips for November. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you in December. Sounds great. See you then. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you, guys. Um, So stay tuned to um, future podcasts and for Jeffrey to return in December. Thank you very much and have a good week. Thank you.